Say hi, hi, mom. Hello, mom. <laughs> Hey mom, so today Nick and I decided to change the pace and explore more of the spiritual side of Ubud. We visited two temples and traveled to the rice paddies of Tegalalam. Our first temple was Gunan Kawi. In order to enter the temples in Bali, you have to wear a sarong, which we decided to purchase from a local Balinese who had an interesting story to tell. But will you tell me the story of Obama? Uh, Barack, here, yeah? Yeah. Barack Obama come, come here five years ago. Five years ago? Yes, five years ago in two, 2017. Uh, he was with the, his family come here okay. and then going to the temple. Uh, he's very, very friendly. I talk, hello, Mr. Barack Obama, and his hands were, hi, how are you? Like that. <laughs> but I don't have the hand like that because to many people and bodyguard. After that great unexpected story, I grabbed my sarong and we headed through the gate. Gunan Kawi is located in the Tampoxering village. It's estimated the site was built in the 11th century and predates the introduction of Hinduism in Bali. It consists of a series of shrines called Penharman, which were built to honor and worship the ancestors of the kings. It was a long walk down. So we stopped for a photo overlooking this beautiful jungle. And continued on our way. So by the looks of people walking up, this is going to be kind of a difficult trek back up. Wow. Whoa! That's stunning. These statues are striking and huge. They are carved directly into the rock, four on one side of the river and five on the other. Apparently there's one more, but we didn't see it or know it was there when we were visiting. We then made our way to the Hindu temple built on this site. What's the significance of these doorways like this? Like it's the, for the gate, the main, the main gate for the main. So when you wear the sarong, you have, that's when these gates? Yeah. Because you see these same things um, everywhere. Yes, right? everywhere. Everywhere in also in Bali, we make a uh, one gate. You make what? One gate in one house. One gate? Yeah. Okay. In the temple also. So after a long and tiring hike out, and certainly a few coconuts along the way, we met our friend again and got ready for our next temple visit at Tirta Impul. So I'm here at Tirta Impul. Apparently Tirta means water. It's a water temple. And hopefully we can get into the water and, and uh, there's like a cleansing that you can do. Um, where you go from one water cleansing hole to the other. And check out behind me this tree. It's just huge. These look like people going to get their cleansing. That's the entrance. That looks like the extra exit. Girls drenched. Yes, you guessed it. In order to enter the temple, we got back into a sari, this time green. We were given an offering which we placed on an altar after we set our intention. We then got in line and played the waiting game. When we finally got in the water, it was cold. So you can probably guess what Nick and I were talking about. I'm sure it was something like, hey, that girl cute. Yeah, really cute. 
You like chocolate? Yeah, chocolate good. Anyway, after our deep conversation, when it was my turn, I eagerly jumped in, only a little too eager because I bumped my head. The water itself comes directly from fresh springs. This temple and the water cleansing also predates Hinduism in Bali. I love that this ceremony has survived millennia and that we are experiencing it in the same way that people did thousands of years ago. You then move down the line one spring at a time. By the fourth, I definitely felt a certain heaviness lift. I also figured out how not to bump my head. So after an amazing cleansing, we got back in the car and headed to Tagalalong Rice Field and met up with our new friend Ben, who has lived in the area for a while. Wow. wow. Look, so talented. Wow, look at that. Very good balance. Down here we'll see right there where they're seeding the rice with the guys. And then once they're big enough, they transplant them into rows. So the whole village has to work together to flood these rice terraces with the Subak system. Um, it's astounding, you know, nobody knows exactly how old these are, but they could be four, five, six, seven hundred year old terraces. Wow. Uh, wow, they have done a lot of planting. So you can see all these, these walls were just freshly mudded. Meaning they carved them? Uh, no, 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 they just added mud. Hello. After our rice field walk, we came across some locals singing karaoke and drinking okay. tuwak, a local palm tree wine. It can only be harvested by climbing up to the top of a palm tree and collecting the natural fermented tree sap. <laughs> Thank you. At the end of our long day, we made sure to grab some food and yes, more coconuts and reflected on an incredible day of adventures. I also have to reflect on how fun it's been to have Nick to travel with these last several days. He will be leaving tomorrow. It's been incredible and I'm left with a feeling of both gratitude and also a little anxiety about returning once again to my solo traveling. And while it might be sad to say goodbye, this does leave open the possibility of meeting new people and having new adventures. To my mom and everyone watching these videos and supporting me, I just want to say thank you so much.